Hey, give me some of that. Look out, you're spilling it. 4830 Avalon, suspect 15 male Hispanic gang members. Welcome to MSA 50. Oh man, hide the beer quick. It was a stupid thing to do, and I did not handle the whole thing very well. Good evening, do you know why I stopped you? No, officer. You failed to come to a complete stop at the intersection back there. I, I thought I did stop. No, you didn't. May I see your license and registration, please? Yes, sir. What are you fellas doing tonight? We're just uh, riding around. How old are you? I'm 17. Who is this car registered to? Uh, me, Tata. I mean, my father. Are you Ukrainian? Yes, officer. Is that a beer can on the floor over there? Yes, officer. Okay, I want all of you to step out of the car. I was the primary unit that pulled the car over, which was driven by Andre that night. A sobriety test showed that Andre had not been drinking, but I issued him a citation for the open container. I let him drive home, while I followed him with the other boys in my patrol car. As any segment of a community grows, it comes into more frequent contact with both law enforcement and the justice system. So the fact that someone like Andre commits a violation is not unusual, but it's always complicated when their families are new to this country, which means that their language barriers and cultural issues that can really impede communication and possibly impact the disposition of a case. The Slavic community in Sacramento is made up almost 60% of Ukrainian, 30% Russian, and the rest from Belarus and other former Soviet republics. The first real Slavic neighborhood in this area was largely Russian community of Bright in West Sacramento just across the river from downtown Sacramento. For more than 80 years, this continued to be the center of the community in the region. After 1988, immigration from the USSR into the Sacramento area increased dramatically. Many people escaping religious repression in the Soviet Union for their Christian beliefs made their way here. Over 40,000, three times as many as in Los Angeles and five times as many as San Francisco. Various neighborhoods began to take root, moving outward from the downtown area. Those new districts were centered around affordable housing, desirable schools, and maybe most significantly, Slavic language churches. The churches needed land to build, which was too expensive near the urban centers. So these communities have grown in places as widespread as Rancho Cordova, North Highlands, Citrus Heights, and Fair Oaks. Although these communities remain very tight-knit, children and teenagers are exposed daily at schools to lots of different ethnic and cultural interactions and friendships. This often results in behavior that parents consider to be unacceptable, especially in boys. In many Slavic households, Corporal punishment is considered not only appropriate, but condoned through scripture. So, as I was walking Andre to the front door of his house, I knew that he was going to have to face the music from his parents. This is unbelievable that you would do such a thing. We trust you with an automobile. This is what you do? How can you be so stupid? Tell me, how? But it wasn't me. It was Tommy's beer. I didn't even know he had it. 
So do Stambi tell police the beer is his? No. <laughs> Some friend is Tommy. He's a little criminal. But we have to suffer now for what he did. For what you let him do. You bring shame to our house. I am not too old to teach you real lesson, Andre. Constantine, you know you should not do that. It will only make this worse for us. Worse? We pay more for apartment to be close to church and school for this one? We have no family here. No one will hire me, yet you have a job. It is all backwards. Sometimes I think we should just go back home. It is not what we thought it would be like here. That is true. But I have job because I have learned English better than you. You are electrician. The language of your trade is more difficult. You must practice more. It is not only how I speak English. They look at me like I am foreigner. They want us to go back. At first I was sad. Now sometimes I am angry. This country is full of foreigners. Some here a long time, some not. It does not matter what others want. Only what we want. We come here so our children can have better lives. In America, Andre can go to college. Not like home where our religion kept him out. It seems to me he has better chance of going to jail, not to college. Coming to America was the hardest thing we have ever done. But we did it for our children, for our future. For years, we had heard the radio from America tell of this city in California, Sacramento. The radio said here we could live in freedom and practice our faith in a Christian land, not like Soviet Union. It sounded like dream come true, but like dream, not real, not for us. Although I had a good job as electrician, our faith was not approved by state. That I had no chances for promoting. It was how you say, uh, how you say? Dead end. Dead end. Then it seemed like miracle. Gorbachev and the other communist big shots declared perestroika and glasnost, our chance to live. So we did. Of course, we wanted to come to Sacramento, but first we needed sponsor. The church we belong to now helped bring us here. You cannot imagine the difficulty of trying to become part of new country and yet remain who you are unless you have done it. Of course, language is biggest problem. If you cannot speak or understand things around you, then you feel outcast. In order to, to help each other out, many of us live close to each other uh, in same apartment buildings sometimes. So it is natural to speak Ukrainian or Russian much of the time. Children know English much more fast from school and American friends. And they want what they see on television, clothes, toys, food. Because children know more, they use this way. We do not like television so much. Many programs are bad and we do not allow in home. In old country, like most people, we did not have automobile. Constantine rode on bus for work and of course, I stay at home with children, but now I work and getting automobile, insurance, license was necessary. For many things, we need credit card and we have bank for loan of automobile. All these things were new to us and now we are trying to buy a computer for Andre and his schoolwork with financing. A computer for children worries me more than television. Uh, they know everything about it and I know nothing. Freedom is hard to get used to. <laughs> this may sound strange to Americans, but this is because they have always had it. 
in Soviet Union, government control everything, where you live, what your job is, where your children go to school, if they go to college, you'll get used to making no decisions. Everything is done for you, and you do not complain if it is not done well. Here, you must make so many decisions. Apartment, job, school, and there are no guarantees. In old country, you trust no one. Everyone can be spy for police. Your neighbor, friend, even family. Sometimes people who say things against the government disappear. So no one talks too much. They say here there is a как сказать равное правосудие. Um, justice for all. Da, justice for all. But I do not trust any government. They say because we are refugees from the Soviet Union, they will help us. But I cannot get electrician job because I cannot pass English test. So I must wash dishes for money? I do not think so. The government says no more help for us soon. And then what? Now police come here with my son in police car, and they say he has done crime. I do not know if my son lies or policeman lies. Many of us are here stopped by police, maybe because we are Ukrainian or Russian. Now we have to go to court, and after maybe Andre does not come home with us, and maybe he does not go to college. I am doing all talking. If you say anything wrong, they will use it against us. So be quiet. Next. We are here because police give my son this paper by mistake. Okay, this is a notice to appear in a citation. Are you Andre Teschenko? Yes, he is Andre Teschenko. Okay, let me check on this. Okay, you are scheduled to appear in Department 99 at 1.30. If you go ahead and go upstairs and wait outside the courtroom, the bailiff will call your name when it is your turn. My son drive car, but beer is not his. He can give you name of boy. Police need to arrest other boy. Sir, your son received this citation, so he needs to appear before the judge. And the judge listen to my son and make this go away? Well, I can't tell you what the judge will say but this is a citation for a misdemeanor and an infraction, and only the judge can make a decision on them. What will the judge decide? Well, he could decide many things. He could impose a fine. He may order that your son participate in work project. He could impose a community service, or he could dismiss the case. Stop. She says Andre is guilty of offense. That's just- Excuse me, that is not what I said. Perhaps it would be better if I made arrangements for you to have an interpreter. Niet, how can I believe what they say you say? I can hear it from your mouth good enough. Konstantin, I don't want to make mistake. Maybe it would be better if we use interpreter from court. All right then, call your interpreter. Okay, go ahead and go upstairs to department 99 and wait outside. I'll make arrangements for an interpreter if there is one available. Coming into court is always stressful for people. And when you add language and cultural issues, it's no wonder that simple misunderstandings can sometimes escalate into something unnecessary or worse. The clerk's encounter with the Tyschenko family is a fairly typical example of some of these difficulties. The number of immigrants in the Sacramento area continues to grow every year. And so that means we're seeing an increase in the number that enter the court system as well. Lack of English language skills among new arrivals to the United States is the most common problem that we encounter with these groups. Spanish in this region is so prevalent that many court documents are now available in that language. There are also a number of court employees with Spanish language skills, so we are able to handle the caseload adequately. 
Many words in Spanish are similar to English, so it is relatively easy to pick up words and phrases with occasional exposure to the language. Over the last several decades, the influx of immigrants from Southeast Asia and the former Soviet Union has placed a more complex burden on the court. The populations in the countries behind the Iron Curtain spoke more than 200 different languages and dialects. Providing services in all these languages would be impossible. Ironically, however, the communist government of the Soviet Union, in their attempt to Russify many of the countries under their rule, required that the Russian language was taught in all schools. So it became a kind of a national language across borders. With the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the newly independent nations naturally restored their own languages to official status. However, the Russian language remained as a common link among them. The majority of Ukrainians, for example, speak both languages. Ukrainian and Russian are both Slavic languages and are based upon a completely different alphabet than English, known as Cyrillic. The phonetic structures are very dissonant sounding to the Western ear, so it is more difficult to find similarities between Slavic languages and English, and harder to pick up words and phrases. When speaking English, the difference in language structure is apparent as well. The articles the, a, e, and an, for example, are not used in Slavic languages. So, many who are learning to speak English will not use them. Cultural differences between a free society like the United States and repressed nations as those that were under Soviet rule are almost too numerous to count. A general distrust of government agencies is quite common. Many think that law enforcement agencies and the courts are part of the same organization. Because the police or sheriff arrested or cited them, they believe that the court's job is to find them guilty and punish them. In fact, this is typically the way it worked in the former Soviet Union republics. So it is not too surprising that many think it works that way here too. Court employees sometimes encounter what appear to be hostile, rude or arrogant attitudes. A lot of this comes from frustration not being able to communicate in English very well. Maybe they're having difficulty finding employment, or they're starting to see problems with their teenage children. There is almost always a trace of separation anxiety, that is, regret over the loss of their family and friends left behind in their homeland, as well as social structures, possibly the career they had, even climate and landscape differences. Others think that the system can be bullied through a passive-aggressive approach, again from experience in their homeland. In a system where bureaucrats could be bribed and the black market flourished, survival often depended on a might-makes-right approach. If they were forceful enough, then they could get their way through sheer belligerence. If not, they resort to a kind of sulking, manipulative attitude. Some will use the language barrier to their advantage, claiming a misunderstanding where there is really none. These issues are all learned behaviors and are compounded by the overwhelming difficulties involved in adjusting to life in the United States. As survival techniques, they are an acknowledgement of sorts to the perseverance of a people who until only recently lived under a harsh autocracy that allowed little freedom and even less incentive to contribute to society. Knowledgeable court clerks keep these things in mind when working with a family like the Tyshenkos. As difficult as it is for the clerks, it is much harder for the family. The main focus in the juvenile division is to educate and guide, not to punish. In juvenile court that day, Andre was ordered to attend a safety class and both Andre and his father were admonished by the judge. But to Konstantin Tyshenko, any dealings with law enforcement and the court system was cause for great humiliation and disgrace. And as if it weren't unpleasant enough already, the next day Konstantin received a letter from the court that would increase everybody's stress level even more.
Ludmila, come here. What is this? It's a karmic traffic violation. Who in their car do this? Was night under a drove car. Where is he? In Rome, studying. The Tischenka family came to Sacramento almost two years ago now. Our church helped acquire their visas and arrange for travel to this area. So naturally, they became members of our congregation. They found an apartment close by the church and close enough for the children to walk to school. And this is important because for us, the church is the center of not only our spiritual existence, but our social lives as well. In some cases, the minister may visit the home of church members who are having difficulty with issues that they are reluctant to discuss outside the home. There is a saying in the old country, не выноси ссор из избы. One does not take trash outside of one's home. Людмила Тищенко asked me to come to their home and speak to Andrei and Константин to try and restore peace within the family. Я хотел бы прочитать вам что-то из Библии, и я думаю, это будет очень полезно для вас. So this is how I became involved with the situation that the Tischenko family now faced. Для нас важно верить высшие силы. Those who came to religion as adults often have a more passionate feeling about it. The non-Orthodox Christian faiths were introduced in old Russia around the year 1860. Many people who were not members of the official Orthodox Church adapted or converted to these faiths. Thousands were executed or imprisoned by the Tsar for practicing these religions. After the revolution of 1917, under communist rule, it was impossible to worship openly and live a Christian life. This religious repression continued for many decades, many generations. The gulag filled with religious dissidents, but also those who only wished to express their faith in worship meetings. Those who entered these prisons usually never left them. Many were imprisoned under the rules that they were mentally defective. A common practice in the Soviet Union for disposing of political enemies. This is why many of us are reluctant to go to counseling or therapy for problems that may be caused from the stress of adapting to life in this country. It is thought that these things will be on record for the government to use as they wish. Then came the period of time in the late 1980s. It was a time of immense change in the Soviet Union. The economy and the government were in great turmoil. In an attempt to improve relations with the West, Mikhail Gorbachev announced a program of perestroika and glasnost which allowed many who were persecuted for their religious beliefs to leave the Soviet Union. Many Christians of the Baptist and Pentecostal faith made their way to Sacramento. They came to the city for several reasons. There was already a neighborhood called Bright in West Sacramento, where many Russians resided. Here, families belonging to Orthodox and non-Orthodox faiths lived as neighbors and raised their children while adjusting to the new culture that surrounded them. A radio program called Word to Russia had been broadcasting behind the Iron Curtain from West Sacramento for years, encouraging religious refugees to make their way to Sacramento and they did, by the thousands. 
you can't understate the importance of the church in our community. We fought and died to practice our faith in the old country. It nourished and sustained us during many dark days. The Bible revealed to us better paths through life, a way to overcome the inhumanity of an atheist regime. Keeping the family together is a vital role of the church. The role of family in Soviet society was submissive to the collective needs of the state. Now here in United States, where there is so much freedom, those of our faiths face different challenges. Here there is much temptation everywhere one looks. So we have gone from living in one extreme to the other. Families, parents are simply trying to walk the reasonable path of restraint and devotion. But it's not easy. There are too many influences, so is that many remain within the familiar world of the church. Here there is safety and assurance that our values can be maintained. But this will change. As our children adopt more things American, they will become more American. That is how this country works. That is how it has always worked, from the Germans in Pennsylvania to the Irish and then Italians. When our children have children, they will be raised in homes where our language and English are both spoken. We can keep our culture and our pride and also become citizens of this great country. Then we will truly live the American dream. Okay, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to impose the fine of $161 for the speeding violation. Please step through the side door to make payment arrangements. Next. Konstantin Teschenko. To the charge of failure to stop at a red traffic light, how do you plead? I was not driving car. It was my son. That's your son sitting over there? Yes. Would you please step up to the podium? What is your name? His name is Andre. Sir, you're going to have to let your son answer. What is your name? My name is Andre Tyshenko. How do you plead to the charge of Vehicle Code Section 21453, Subdivision A, running the red light, which was recorded by the traffic camera? I'm guilty. Very well, then. I'm going to dismiss the charge against Konstantin Tyshenko, and I'm going to amend the case file to name Andre Tyshenko as the defendant. I will also note that he has entered a plea of guilty. Young man, operating a motor vehicle is a privilege, not a right. And as a minor, it is also a privilege for you to use your parent's car. If there had been an accident, your parents might have been legally responsible for any damages or injuries. When they gave you the keys to their car, they placed a lot of trust in your hands. You let them down. Try not to let it happen again, okay? I'm going to fine you $371 as mandated under the vehicle code. I'm also going to offer you traffic school, and this will keep the point from going on your DMV record. Have you attended traffic school within the last 18 months? No, I haven't. Would you like to attend traffic school? Yes, please. Andre does not have such amount of money. Do I have to pay for this? No, sir, you do not. Andre, are you willing to perform 24 hours of community service in lieu of the fine? I don't understand in lieu of. Instead of the fine? Yes, please. Very well, then. Please step through the side door and into the fines room, and they'll give you information on completing community service and the traffic school. Next. Hello, I'm Judge Trina Berger Plavin of Sacramento Superior Court, State of California. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this presentation. The Sacramento Superior Court exists to ensure justice, fairness, and equality to everyone under the law. While that statement refers to the mission of the court as an institution, it's also the mission of each judge and every court employee. Further, 
the everyone part of that statement is encompassing. It includes not only native-born persons, but also newcomers from all parts of the world. We realize that moving to a new country, even to escape persecution or repression, can cause stress. For example, immigrants have to learn to speak, read, and write a new language. They must become accustomed to living and raising their children in a foreign country. And sometimes they must enter the court system. Our court system is very different from that which existed in the former Soviet Union. We believe it is important that all members of the court, from the clerks you meet at the counter to the judges in the courtroom, have a basic understanding of court users' cultural and language backgrounds. Officers of the court are required to take many hours of training when they first join the bench, and they have continuing education throughout their careers. Court staff also has an array of required training and continuing education. Yet, it is also the responsibility of new residents and citizens to familiarize themselves with our justice system. In any society, the concept of freedom can succeed only when members of that society exercise personal responsibility and are accountable for their actions. The basic rules of our legal system are clear. First, a person is considered innocent of a crime until found guilty in a court of law. Second, all people charged with a crime have a constitutional right to a fair and speedy trial. Further, a person accused of a misdemeanor or felony has a right to have an attorney help defend against the charges. Regardless of the charge, all people accused of a crime are treated humanely and their civil rights respected. As a judge, my role is to supervise the trial in order to ensure it is conducted properly and fairly. The late Supreme Court Justice William Brennan believed that the United States Constitution and the 14th Amendment exist to guarantee the essential dignity and worth of each individual. This is a vision that we at Sacramento Superior Court seek to fulfill.